St. George has drawn each of us here for a variety of reasons. The desert has blossomed and provided a quality of life that is hard to match anywhere. But the unprecedented growth in the past several years has many citizens seeing big city problems, including the possibility of traffic nightmares currently being experienced along the Wasatch Front. I've lived here for 13 years and the traffic is a problem and something needs to be done. It's, it's a mess. They've got to figure out some way to relieve that pressure. At all costs, stay away from the boulevard between 4 and 6 o'clock in the afternoon because it's just a log jam and it takes you forever to get through all the stoplights and get to where you want to go. Even though there are people here who don't drive, who don't use the highways and the roads, they depend on them heavily for other services, fire, police, uh, to get to the medical center and, and those kinds of things. So everybody depends on transportation. A great deal has and is being done to keep up with the growth and traffic demands. But city officials themselves are concerned that more needs to be done. Our quality of life in St. George is very important to our citizens and is very important to the elected officials. Uh, in order to keep that quality of life at a high standard, we commissioned the Dan Jones and Associates to do a poll for us to find out what kind of a job are we doing and what do we need to do better. In that survey of 600 people, it did come back to indicate that traffic was the number one issue. That's one reason why the City Council has approved the Transportation Improvement Plan, recently developed by the Public Works Department. The plan outlines priorities of the streets that require improvement throughout St. George. It also defines options for maximizing current funds and securing additional funds for improvements. In 1995, St. George was the first city in the state of Utah to complete a comprehensive transportation plan. That plan identified prioritized projects which will enable St. George to keep ahead of the curve and complete needed projects which will solve problems before we get into crisis situations. We just recently opened Riverside Drive and we think that will carry about 10,000 cars a day, which is about a fourth of what St. George Boulevard is now taking. The city has been completing a lot of important roads in the area, but there are a lot of additional projects that need to be completed. For example, the area of Mall Drive needs to be improved. One of the interesting facts that traffic engineers gave us in the transportation study was that we can expect a huge increase in traffic flow down in the Southgate area along Dixie Drive and Tonequin Drive. As a traffic engineer for the city of St. George, our goal for River Road is to widen that road to enhance the capacity. It's a major north-south collector that collects a lot of the traffic that comes in from Bloomington Hills to get into town, and we need to increase the capacity of that road. Sunset and Bluff is reaching near capacity, especially during the peak hour times, like in the afternoons at 5 o'clock. The traffic backs up on Bluff Street, and Sunset can take the traffic, but the traffic has a hard time getting through that intersection. The, the city of St. George has developed a pavement management program to try to keep our streets at a acceptable level of service. At our current funding levels, the streets are deteriorating faster than we can keep them maintained. After that, there are second and third phase priorities, which include numerous projects throughout the area. A major challenge with improving our streets and roads is funding. But we do have three options. The first option is to do nothing at this time. If we decide not to act now on improving our roads, city engineers expect the following to happen. Pavement and surface level will continue to decline. We will live with the same roads and the same traffic congestion. Level and frequency of service will decline, eventually forcing us to improve our roads. When we do, the cost to reconstruct a worn-out road is three times as much as it is to keep it well-maintained. The second option is that property taxes could be increased. The advantages are that the funding received would stay in St. George and that it's a stable form of income. The disadvantages are that one, only St. George residents would pay, not visitors and tourists. Two, businesses would pay a heavy load. Three, the funds are not dedicated solely to transportation. 
and at any time could be diverted to meet city funding needs. And four, the average property tax would increase by over 56%. The third option is implementing a quarter cent sales tax. The advantages of this option include, one, the money raised would stay in St. George. Two, the money would be dedicated to transportation improvements. And three, everyone would help pay, including tourists. On that note, the State Tax Commission estimates 33% of St. George sales tax is paid by non-residents. The City Council thanks you, the citizens, for watching this program, which we have provided for you to become better informed of the options available to us in our transportation needs. I, as the Mayor, ask you to carefully consider these options so together we can make a better informed decision that keeps St. George the gem of Southern Utah that we always have been and always will be.